What kind of stuff do we see here? Everything. Everything. You want it, they got it. Yeah. And last time I was there, I was selling heroin. So this is sort of the west side of the city, typically the more affluent side, uh, a very quiet, nice, beautiful sort of mecca, if you will, of Marietta. It's an area that is affluent. It's an area that has a lot of resources. It was actually a shock to find out that they had one of the highest death rates around the country from heroin overdoses. Most opioid addictions have started from some form of a pill, well, especially out here in this community that has the insurance was really the key to it is that, you know, if little Johnny over here breaks his leg, well, his mom works for this great company and they have health insurance, they're gonna go to a doctor and they're gonna get treatment in some form of a pain pill. Our athletes, our honor students have injuries and they're given more pills than they should be given. And as a result, they've become addicted. But when we came in and tightened up, we had addicted kids who then easily turned to heroin, which is cheap and out on the streets. And that's been a big part of the problem. There was a day where if someone wanted to get heroin, they had to go down to the bluff to get it in Atlanta. They started making documentaries about the bluffs and everything and put it on blast and then everybody knew exactly where to go and it was downhill from there. And now the bluff is everywhere. Opiates are rampant throughout our communities. No one's immune. I know from my side of things, whenever it came to the different sections of the town, you would see the kids of these people over here, they would come to our side of the town because they knew that's where you could get the dope from. And then also they weren't really judged over there. If you go sitting in your car on the side of the road over here, somebody's going to notice you. But a couple hundred yards back up the street and you're in a neighborhood that's well known for drug activity. So no one's going to look at you twice. They're just going to drive on by and let you do your thing. You notice we crossed the tracks, maybe, so to speak, the wrong side of the tracks. So this is an example of an extended stay where we've historically had issues. Once you've got a couple felonies under your belt, it's very difficult to go get an apartment or to get a job to where you can finance a house. And somewhere like this, you come up with your weekly paycheck, a couple hundred dollars, you can get a room for a week, and then come do it again the next week. A lot of our crime problems do center around the hotels. We're out there on a daily basis running tags. We actually have canine sniff agreements, which allows us to bring the dogs on the property and randomly sniff exterior doors. Uh, we have uh, criminal trespass agreements signed with these hotels to come onto the property and help enforce their rules and regulations and city and state laws. That was by far the cheapest hotel around here for a very long time. Yeah, you could get rooms there for $25 a night. You didn't want them though, I promise. Nope. By helping everyone else, it lets us know where we were and we don't want to go back to. There is some shame and there is some guilt in the things that I've done. But if I can put that out there up front, you know what I am and who I am. You can choose whether or not to give me the second chance or you know, walk away.